God bless you, O King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, you are O King. Take over us, O oh God. Take over us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not enough to face my troubles. I'm not enough to face my struggles. I'm not enough, Lord. Even to go after my dreams. I need you. Meet us, O oh Lord. Meet us. Meet us, O oh Lord. Thank you for promising that you will never leave us nor forsake us, O oh God. We want to travel with you, O oh Lord. We want to walk with you. We want to run with you. We want to dance with you, O oh Lord. We want to climb mountains with you, my God. We want to reap our harvest, O oh Lord. We want to go after our dreams and wishes, all for your glory, Master, that you are with us, that you will never leave us, nor forsake us. We will climb the mountains of sickness. We will overcome the weaknesses. We will overcome the depression. We will overcome divorce. We will overcome division, oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your overcoming power and presence is right here. Oh, right now, oh Lord, while in your presence, I speak healing to the bodies right now, Father. Whoever is in need of, Oh, I speak healing over my uncle that is in India who is in need of healing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we release your healing upon that body, oh Lord. Thank you for your meeting us. You are meeting us right now in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, there are so many around us that are struggling right now, Lord. We lift up Texas right now, Father. Our brothers and sisters that are struggling in Texas. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak your healing upon that land, Lord. Not only in Texas, Lord, all the other states that are being affected by now. Right now with this cold front, my God, we stand with them by faith, Lord. No weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. Oh, we speak healing. We speak life. We speak heat in the name of Jesus. We come against these storms in the name of Jesus. We stand in faith and we stand against the wiles of devil, oh God. Oh, we rebuke the plans of evil and we speak life to the plan of God in Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this great nation, for you are here, Lord. For you are here, you are not here to forsake us, to let us live in darkness, but to live in your marvelous light. We call forth, let there be light in this nation in Jesus' name. Let there be light in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let us declare it. Let there be light in Jesus' name. The darkness shall not prevail, O oh God. Lord, people are suffering under this pandemic, Lord. People lost houses. People lost families. People lost hope. Oh, my God, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Lord, I pray that you would restore them. Give them wisdom. Give us understanding that we may walk in your righteousness, oh God. That we may walk in your wisdom and get back and stand for your glory, oh Master. That this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And we will be overcomers in Christ Jesus. Oh, we are more than conquerors for His glory. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you for your plan of life is at work in our lives. Your will be done in our lives, in our families' lives, in our marriages, in our society, in our nation, in on this earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. So we your welcome grace. you once again. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. A blessing to be in His presence. Well, we'd love to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407 490 4019. Again, the number is 407 490 4019. We'd love to pray for you. And we have been declaring Psalm 91 um, during this whole season. And we'll continue to declare this. We'll declare it in spirit and in truth. There's power in the word. So please declare it with me. He who dwells in the secret, secret place, place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Be sure He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His shoes shall be your shield and buckler. You shall, shall not be afraid of the terror by night, night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste and gloom. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord my refuge, even the most high in your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling place. For he shall bring his angels charge over you, to keep, keep you on your ways. ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. 
because he has he set, set his, his love upon me. me. Therefore, Therefore, I will deliver him. him. I will set him on high because, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. 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 Thank Lord. Yeah. Bless us with the word. May we be blessed. Amen. Glory. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey. It's, there's power in the chair. <laughs> it's a powerful chair. Right? Oh, my goodness. Hey, so that's what I need. <laughs> All right. Isn't God good? Amen. His presence is awesome, isn't it? Amen. When everything that goes on in and around our life is presence, that makes Amen. all the difference. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, I think that's what we have to seek for. That's what we have to look yeah. for. His presence. Amen. When He comes in, He changes. Amen. He calms your nerves down. Mm -hmm. He helps you with everything that uncertainty that you are going, it's, he's like, he doesn't say the problem is over, I'm with you. Amen. The biggest confidence that you can have, the God Almighty being by your side. Amen? Amen. Amen? There is no mountain that you can't climb, and there is no valley that you can't walk through Amen. while he is by your side. Amen? Amen? Amen. Don't be singing that song now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's go to our Bible study. Paul is traveling through certain things. In other words, the church is traveling through certain things. And uh, you and me also need to realize and recognize um, there are phases that you and me will be going through. You know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon uh, said, there is nothing new under the sun. And uh, many of you who lived through a certain life, you can tell, I have seen these fashions. They are coming back. You know, I lived through that, and now they are back up again. It's because there is nothing new. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. But for us, uh, when we are facing certain things in our lives, it just feels like it is, man, why is this? Um, when we go through this book, one of my uh, prayers is also that we can understand and relate to it. In other words, Jesus tries to tell us something. If they have rejected me, they will also reject you. That doesn't look like a promise for me. I'm like... Evidently, what he is promising is, okay, you'll be rejected. That doesn't sound like a great deal for me. But he is also giving us a reality, a realistic view of what we can expect in our life. Don't be surprised when somebody rejects you. Don't be surprised something rejects you. We shouldn't be surprised with those things. But the problem is, uh, um, I think I can use this word. Christians are way underprepared. Mm -hmm. Way underprepared. You got to be prepared to be able to tackle things. You know, one of the uh, things when you are tackling, you got to be prepared. Otherwise, you're dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, when, when you don't prepare yourself, you are opening yourself for the devil to destroy you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the battle to come and overtake you instead of you being the in charge of the battle. Amen. So but God wants you and me to be prepared rightly so that we may reap the benefits and stand. And oftentimes when you are not prepared for it, uh, you don't, you don't um, even though you are gifted for it, even though you are talented for it, you have the skills for it. You don't survive in it. 
Because your reaction is too slow. Because you, your reaction is caught in surprise. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when you should have had a, a, a head start, now you are reacting. So the ground you, you should have been covered already, now you are reacting. That's why your life many times seems like all I am doing is swimming against the current. It just seems like it, it just feels like it because when the devil knocked you off your feet, you were surprised. Why would this happen to me? How could it happen to me? Why did this happen to me? This is all we are looking at. But we have to understand it is being given to us in the Bible that it will happen. Jesus himself clearly said, in this world you will have tribulation." You will have struggles. Yeah. I don't like struggles, but it will happen. That should not surprise us. As a matter of fact, okay, let it come. Let me write this thing. You know, that's the best example I can always think of is a surfer. When everybody is running away from the tide, he runs to the tide. Because he knows how to climb over those things. Amen? Amen. That you and me needs to become the surfers in life. We don't walk or run away from at the sight of trouble. Rather, we overcome it. You know, we all we like to declare ourselves, I'm an overcomer. How in the world are you going to overcome if you never face it? We don't want to face anything dirty. We don't want to face anything uh, um, uncomfortable. Anything that is not familiar to us. We don't want to face it. That's not our nature. We don't want to do that. But if you embrace it, and knowing this is what is going to pull me, or put me into the place where I am an overcome. When you look at it like that, then instead of walking away from the tide, you will go after it. Imagine yourself. Is this all you got? Saying that to the devil. Imagine that. Is this, a, is this your best shot? Is this the best shot you got? Imagine, imagine you living in that life. Instead of being panicked about what's the next step, next step of the devil, what's the next attack of the devil, instead of that, hey, I'm ready for any shot that you might throw at me. I'm ready for it. I'm not gonna let let uh, someone let the devil take an upper hand. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So uh, some of the things that uh, Paul is traveling through this thing, the early church is traveling through, should be a preparation for us. What we will face. What are the things that are coming into our life, so we may have a godly reaction. Amen? Amen. Yes. We don't want to miss out on our reactions because our reactions determine our end results. How you react to certain things makes all the difference. So um, let's go. Go ahead and go through, go to our uh, uh, 17th verse, 17th chapter, sorry. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went in to them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. Yeah. Anybody, that, I'm sorry, book of Acts, 7th chapter. 17th, 17, sorry. Explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. Now, that, that is a very important statement for us to um, know, and that is one of the major statements that is being challenged in our everyday life right now. 
which is, um, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. The, the Christ, um, Christ means anointed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is only one anointed, one appointed one. And this is the statement that they are putting out here, the Christ. Uh, whereas right now, uh, everybody out there, uh, all these people that are famous, that are in Hollywood, that proclaim God and all these people, they're like, they come to the place, oh, there are many ways to go to God. And that is the debate right now. And you as a Christian, you could sit down and say, hey, no, that's wrong. But you have to see the next verse in the fourth verse where it says, where it says and some of them were persuaded. Our mission is persuasion. Can you persuade, not argue? Can you persuade somebody from your faith? Why do you believe in what you believe? Let me be very honest here. 90 to 95, let me put it this way, 90 to 99% of the Christians are not informed enough to defend their faith. Very minor portion of Christians know how to defend their faith. One of the main reasons they cannot defend their faith is their faith never got tested. Their faith never got utilized. What good it is if you have faith to move the mountains and never moved it. That is many, many times the Christian struggle is you never used your faith. Oh, what, is, what does faith have to do with the scholarly things? Let me tell you something else. By faith you understand. That's what Hebrews 11 also says. By faith you understand. By faith you will also understand the, the, the plans of God. The wisdom of God. So it is important that we put our faith to test so we may learn from it, we may acquire from it and be able to supply the persuasion that is needed. Let me ask you an honest question. When was the last time you won an argument? The honest answer to that is never. Because in arguments there is no victory. Everybody thinks their point is correct. So there is no power in argument. But there is definitely power in persuasion. How can you persuade? How can you present it? In such a way that it would click. Or it would connect to their faith. You can only present that to others if you have persuaded. If you know how to persuade for yourself, you'll be able to present to them, this is how you can persuade. Or this is how I can draw you closer to God. See, because we are missing out on our journey, and I have, uh, I have a, a bone to pick with church also. Church should not be a spoon feeder. True. Amen. It should be something that challenges you to feed yourself. Amen. It should be something that, that uh, gives you enough reason or, or uh, the quickening in you to go persuade or to go seek. Instead, the church is trying to dumb down the message and try to present simple catchphrases. And be done with a message in 10-15 in, uh, minutes. How could you do that? Uh, 
Now there is a, there is a lot that is going on around us that needs to change. So we may grow in our lives. Amen. Amen. Um, so some of them were persuaded and a great multitude of devout who? Greeks. Until now whom they were dealing with? They were dealing with Romans. Mm -hmm. Now they are going to Greeks. Romans understand authority. That's why I remember when the centurion came to Jesus, he talks to him from a perspective of authority. Even me, I have people under me. If I tell this servant to do this, he will do it. Because he understands it from an authority point of view. And even when Paul is presenting to us, he presents the armor of God. <laughs> the armor of God is what he is presenting because it is pre being presented to us from an authority viewpoint. Okay, so uh, as any instrument or any weapon, you can use it for multiple reasons. So look at it like a dynamite. Dynamite, you can use it to, to blow the mountains or kill people. It's in the user's hands and the purpose of it. So, so the same uh, 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 armor of God that can be used as authority symbol or authority purpose can also be used for other purposes also. So here the same Paul and the same Silas who have traveled through Rome is now coming to Greeks. And now they are persuading the Greeks. This is one of the biggest uh, um, uh, challenges you are facing right now at this hour. If we can understand Greeks, what is Greekism? If you can understand Greekism, you will understand what is going on in our life right now. So anytime when, when, when uh, God presents certain things to us or the word of God is speaking certain things to us, we should also uh, have a, a certain uh, understanding of layers of understanding in the sense it's about something that happened then. It's about something that could be happening at, around us. At the same time, it could be something that is happening in me. It could be the same thing that would happen in all these places. That is the power of the word of God. So as we are persuading this Greekism, I just dubbed it, uh, um, as we are persuading the, uh, uh, this Greekism, I pray it would not only expose us to what has happened, it will also expose us to what is happening around us as well as in us. Amen? Amen. So go ahead, read it please. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people but when they did not find them they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city crying out these who have turned the world upside down have come here too uh, uh, look at that that was a scary thing they're not even called Christians by then these people were called world upside downers. <laughs> they turned the world upside down. They, they were used to uh, a system. Now these people are coming and challenging that system. You know why your faith is so dangerous? It challenges the status quo. It challenges the system. You know, everybody have concluded. People have concluded, they think they figured it out. Now you become a pain in their, uh, what, you know what, because you are coming up with a perspective, a faith that they cannot try to prove, not to disprove. That becomes a real challenge. Because it is proven that you cannot walk on water. 
But now you are bringing your faith and trying to walk on water. Now what would I do? Who is used to this system, I would always try to tell you, you're dumb. You're a fool. This is not going to work. So that's the, that, that's the challenge that goes on around us. Because your system that you are operating by, which is the kingdom of God system, that system is not normal to the system of this world. That's why from that day itself they were labeled and they were shunned upon as world changers or world upside down. They call it up, we call it down. Remember what Jesus was saying, a generation where they call good as evil and evil as good. Yeah. That's why they didn't like it. They, that's why they don't like you either. Mm -hmm. So now my question and challenge to all the Christians is let the world not like you because you're following Jesus yeah. not because you're following your own foolishness Amen. that should be a pursuit for us oh they don't like me because I'm doing this I'm like whatever you're doing if it is lining up with the word of God then I, it's fine but if you're doing it out of your own foolishness and thinking you're going to get extra credit for it, no. There are many Christians, they think they are highly pious than others. Just because they are doing certain things. Oh, I, I'm only eating all uh, natural stuff. Doesn't make you go to extra heaven. Are you with me? Yeah. Those kinds of categories, I'm just, it's quick to bring that example. Those kinds of categories, oh, I go to this church. So what? Is there a different heaven for y'all? Is there a different savior? It's the same. Like it or not, you're going to see me in heaven too. Amen. So may as well get used to it now. Okay. So instead of trying, uh, uh, trying to specialize ourselves because of this or because of that, um, we have to come to a place like, okay, uh, we have a bigger mission at our hands. Um, go ahead, please. Jason has harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Oh, okay. Now, even again, in the Greeks, they're meeting different kinds of people. One is a group who wants to shut you down. Mm -hmm. Another is a group, Bible says, is fair-minded. There are some people who poke at your faith. Not because they want to learn from you, but they want to shut you up. That's true. Let me tell you something with that. Don't waste your time with them. It's just trying to plow against the concrete. Those are not worth persuading in many cases. We just need to drop it. And move on. Uh, now why I am saying that, while I am saying it is something that is out there, it's also with us. No matter how much I try, no matter how much the Word of God is trying to contradict you and your opinions or your thoughts, you're not willing to change. Mm -hmm. You think God is going to twirl his thumbs and sit there? How is this? He's just going to walk away. 
Because you are not letting God work into your life. Because people are selective in their belief of God. Some believe Jesus will heal. Some believe don't believe that Jesus healed. Some believe the healing miracles have stopped long back when. Some believe miracles are still right now. Or some believe there is only miracles that has to happen. All these kinds of different things people are coming with instead of letting the word of God establish them. And we are coming to a place where we are stopping from being persuaded. We have a dead set mindset. Let me tell you something. That's the most dangerous part of you. You cannot set yourself. Because God has called us for transformation according to His Word. We are transforming according to His will into His image every day. I have a set goal, that is, to do what the Word of God says and to follow what, how the Holy Spirit is leading. Those are the set goals. That doesn't mean everything that I am doing is lining up with it. We have to line up. We are growing in it. We continue to grow in it. And now my question to all of us is also, is there a place in your life that the, the Lord has stopped persuading you? Uh, okay. That you have done enough of shut-offs that He stopped persuading you? Think about that for a moment. Remember what David prayed. Search me, O Lord. Search me, O Lord. That's the most amazing prayer you and me can make. Don't let me ever be in a place where I cannot be persuaded, Lord. Forgive my ignorance, forgive my arrogance. I'm open for your correction. I'm open for your instruction. I'm open for the newness of what you're bringing into my life. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Now look at this thing. The other, the other group is not searching the scriptures whereas this group is searching the scriptures. When the other person is not willing to seek, no matter how much you bombard, it's not going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true with you. If you are not willing to seek, you can never find it. It's impossible to find that you don't seek. You know what I can call those people as? Not me. Bible calls it lazy. You know, we always are in the business of wanting to stop. We are done. We know it. We figured it out. You know how it works. We know how this thing works. We all come to that place and think we figured it out. No, we haven't. We all need growing. Amen? Amen. So, but these people, when Paul and Silas and their team were persuading them, they were going back to the scriptures trying to find out, is that so? Right now, do you see a society that is open for debate? They're not. They're at the top level. They want to shut you up. They want to shut you off. You know, we see a lot of things that are happening around us. They just want, okay, shut up. That's all it is going. There is no uh, uh, real open-mindedness where we can debate or argue. Or even to the point where we can pursue it. There is no room for exchange of thoughts. Everybody is set in their life. You know, uh, starting from a 13-year-old to 99-year-old, everybody knows the same. Everybody has figured it out. 
Nobody needs nobody. Isn't that what we, what we face these days? You know, I, 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 these days my son stopped doing it, but in the past when he's, I know, he would immediately, when I'm trying to say something, I know. I told him, I looked at his eyes, if you ever say that again to me, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> you don't know. You are knowing. You're still knowing. Don't try to say you know, then you don't know. You know very well, I know more than him, right? Right. But he's like, I know. I. He's, he's, being, he's not being arrogant, yet that's the nature that he is building in us, in him. I need to stop it as a father. Amen. I need to tell him, hey, you have to know. There is more to know. Maybe you know a few things. I'm glad. I'm glad you know a few things. But there is a lot you don't know. So not more. There is a lot more to it than what you know. So don't try to shut off. If you shut me off, you are missing out on your opportunity to know more. Amen. And that is what we do for our God too. That's true. When we think we know, we are shutting him off. Not giving him the true opportunity to make us know more, know better. Amen. 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 All right, keep going. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens, and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. All right, now where is, where is Paul? Athens. Do you know we were, it was considered as the capital of the world at one point? Oh. It was considered as the hub of philosophy, the hub of democracy, hub of everything the modern civilization stands for. It was considered that. And now Paul is going there. Paul is being presented with the system that has been successful, or so-called successful. Now Paul is going and challenging them. This is what is one of the most important things you and me need to know. This system, if we can understand this system carefully, and I can present everything to you today, but I pray that it would trigger us to go for some more research in this direction that would help us. The Greek system. Mm -hmm. The biggest trouble for our young children these days is this system. The Greek system. That is the biggest challenge. We can deal with the Roman system better than Greek system. Or, many times we are trying to solve a Greek problem with a Roman influence. Uh. It doesn't work like that. So, what is the Greek system? Let's, let's look at it. He was provoked, the, Paul was provoked within himself because the city was given over to idols. Every city has a rulership. Every area that you live has a rulership. The actions of that place, that group, that, that uh, nation, whatever it is, it has um, an identity. 
What does your city represent? Mm. That is why it is important to pray for the land you dwell in. Sure. Does your city represent Jesus mm. or idol? Amen? Amen. Does your nation or does your state represent Jesus or the idols? Then comes your nation. Does your nation represent Jesus or the idols? Again, idols are not just carbon images. Anything a person have replaced God with. That is an idol. So in here, Paul saw a bunch of idols and the city was given over to idols. Therefore, what he does there is, go ahead. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Mm -hmm. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him. All right, just take a minute there. That's very important for you to understand. Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. Those philosophies still influence our current society right now. Those are the two philosophies that still influence. Believe it or not, those philosophies influence you too. Every one of us here, we are influenced with the, by these philosophies. Now the next question to you is, what are these philosophies? Mm -hmm. Study them. I'm not going to explain them to you. <laughs> oh, come on. Do some homework. Do some homework. It's good. Homeworks are good, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that. It's very simple. One deals with pleasure, one deals with uh, uh, logic. It's, it's simple deduction if I have to give it to you. But uh, those philosophies, those philosophers have come and encountered him. That's the beauty of it. When, when people come to you or... Uh, Things come to you with a different viewpoint, you should be prepared for it. So let me let me let me let me um, uh, simply put it this way. Well, uh, you know, um, we have all these different wings of military. Why? Because you, ha when you are attacked in air, you're not gonna be sending army. True. You will send air force right. to meet them there. Right? right. You know, it's similar here. You can't just uh, attack uh, whatever it is out there. You know, many times we all are, uh, when you get into this spiritual life, we are all about binding spirits and casting demons and all those kinds of things. Forget that there is, uh, many times there is an intellectual solution for it. There is a logical solution for True. it. Amen. We ignore that part. Mm-hmm. God never said leave logic at the foot door, door, doorstep. Mm -hmm. He never said leave reasoning. If you are a believer, you are also a reasoner. Uh -huh. If you are a believer, you are also a person of logic. True. So now, many times we see uh, Jesus is being called as a philosopher. He is also one of the philosophies out there. This is the best place and the best example to understand how in the world Paul withstood these philosophers. Okay? If we, if we get a handle on this thing, then we will be able to understand how to handle today. Like the scripture says, there is nothing new under the sun. These philosophies that, that were then there, that are still now. There's nothing new. People are more educated in these philosophies 
than the one that outsmarted or debated and stood with those philosophies. You know, oftentimes we don't even look at some, we look at Christianity is something that debated these philosophies. Now, I'm not trying to be too philosophical here, but that is one of the biggest challenges that is going on in he, your, your mind also. There is a logical part of you is trying to tell you this doesn't work. How can you, how can you counter the debate of that logic? You have, you, if you learn that, then, then you'll be able to, you will be able to um, walk by faith even when your logic is, is uh, against you. Even though when these philosophies, these philosophies are not away from you, they live in you. Believe it or not, these philosophies live in us. Okay. So when they are living in us, you know, anybody that has a logical mind would say, you cannot walk on water. Faith says you can. But, the P but Peter walked on water. What was his logic there? How in the world he walked on water? I'm not talking about Jesus walking on water. I'm talking about Peter walking on water. How did he do it? But he says clearly the instruction there. That's where we can go and find out. If you say a word that I can walk, I will walk. So the basis, the logical basis for him was the word. He was still being logical because he's a fisherman. Right. He knows very well. He lived in water all his life. He never walked on water. Yet now he is attempting to walk on water. Isn't that a marvelous thing? Yes. You have never been able to do something in all of your life. Right now you're ready to do that. Amen. Glory be to God in Amen. heaven. Amen. Amen. You have never been able to do that. In throughout your life, but if you bring God's logic into the equation, you'll be able to do that. That's why Jesus boldly says, with men it is impossible, but with God, all oh, things oh, oh, Amen. That's God's logic, you know. So there is there is that conflict that you have you will be going through. Don't just say, I don't have that problem. No, you do. We all have that problems. We all have that philosophy that runs in us. Now, philosophy is not something that has come out from there. It's by observation of people. Most of the philosophy is from the observation of people. But my, my, my philosophy is also an observation of people. But that people is Jesus. Amen. But here, Jesus is not the philosopher here. You know, many times, right now in the society, the debate is, there are so many philosophies. Does this, this is also a good philosophy. Don't put one against another. The other day I have come across a comment where somebody was talking about... Uh, uh, Buddha and uh, Jesus and uh, somebody presented Jesus is the Savior and Buddha um, was not presented in the greatest light. Somebody saw that and why are you trying to put one against another? Why are you trying to put one against another? They both are good philosophies. They both have a good ending and that is what the debate was. And somebody in the middle of it uh, went in and said um, uh, a beautiful thing. Even Buddha needed Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's all men are sinners. That's right. And he was looking for a way out, isn't it? So now, 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 now the philosophies. You're trying to equate someone to something that he doesn't belong to. Jesus is not a philosopher. He may have shared some things that seem philosophical, but he is not a philosopher. Amen. He is the light. Amen. 
I can live without philosophy. Amen? Amen. But not without life. Amen. True. So that's the difference between that. How can you stand, how can your, your belief stand against these philosophies? You have to understand those things. We have to prepare that. We have to try it. When your own mind is trying to tell you this is not going to work for you, how can you conquer it? How can you debate with your own mind? Much less you can debate what, with someone out there. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Go ahead, please. And some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a, a proclaimer of foreign gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Now look at that. Strange. It was strange to them because they have never seen it. You know, uh, one of the beautiful, one of the things that is so popular these days in the in the uh, uh, on uh, uh, these uh, OTT platforms is Stranger Things. Isn't that a show? Mm -hmm. So it's becoming so popular with the young people because they are seeing this supernatural phenomenon and how it can work and how it can make things work differently. They are gravitated toward that. Now I'm, I'm, I'm here to present the strangest thing that anybody could come across would be Jesus. Because nobody have ever seen somebody getting resurrected. Can't get stranger than that. So because, that's, that's because of that, these philosophers, they have been educated, they have gone to colleges, they have gone to all these things that, that have... Uh, 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 brought all this uh, knowledge or whatever you want to call it they have all uh, soaked themselves in all these things and now this stranger and nobody is coming into this city and trying to challenge their faith as much as I would like to give credit to Paul I want to give credit to the people of Athens because they were willing to let this person talk to them they're not shutting them down like the, the group before. They were willing to talk. They were willing to have a conversation, let this joker speak. You know, they labeled him, he is a babbler. Right? Right. But nevertheless, they gave him a chance to speak and to pursue it. All right, go ahead. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. No, that's the beautiful thing that you and me need to understand. When you are trying to present somebody, uh, the gospel to somebody who has been Greekized, do they have that unknown God? Or are they all acting as if they know everything? If somebody is living like as if they know everything, you can't do anything to them. But if they have a room for the unknown God, I don't know it all, those people are persuadable. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true with us. If we leave room for the unknown, we can be persuaded. There are many things I don't know, I have to know. Even with God, even with my faith that I think I know, I still need to know. That puts me in a place of knowing. That doesn't mean I am not confident in what I know. That's not what I'm saying. I'm confident in what I know is working for me. But at the same time, I'm also confident to know more. 
There is more to it than what I know. That's where my pursuit is. Amen? And that is not coming from sitting under a banyan tree. Let me be very clear. It's only coming to me when I sit with the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> All right. I'll keep going. I think we're running out of time. Yeah. God who made the world and everything in it, since He is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is He worshipped with men's hands as though He needed anything, since He gives to all life, breath, and all things. And He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said. For we also are His offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Now look at this. This is what Bible says about ignorance. The 30th verse is important. Whenever we think we are ignorant, truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. repent. Ignorance is not an excuse. I didn't know. I didn't know, officer. Yeah. <laughs> Pay the ticket, sister. <laughs> All right, that's good. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed, among them Dionysius, the Arapagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Amen. See, that is why it is important to let our voice out. No matter what is happening, Paul is, how is Paul persuaded? By speaking. When you have a conflict, the best possible way for you to persuade yourself is by speaking the will of God. You have to speak to yourself. Many times you are the mountain that is coming between you and your miracle. That's a fact. So you need to know how to speak to you. You need to know how to speak the will of God out. So you may be persuaded. Amen? Amen. The same way. Many people mocked. It's inevitable. Because those people are all the people of sight. Mm. Greekism is simple. It's a system of intellectualism. The people who live by what they see, what they feel, what they experience. That is the Greek system. And that's what Paul was facing there. That's why I told you that Greek system is in us. Have you never walked by sight? <laughs> Have you never fell for your own experience? Have you never walked by your own feelings? Have you never walked by your own education? You know, how many times, I don't know about you, that many times my education contradicts my faith. It's a very big challenge for me. Sometimes, how can I be educated and be something like this?
But my education in this world can be influenced by my education in God. Amen. But if I don't educate myself in the Lord, the education of this world will always dominate me. So I pray that we will grow more in it and I pray that God will show more of this Greek system that is running our life every day. The same way it has happened how Ishmael mocked Isaac is the same way even till now. Mm -hmm. This Greek system mocks belief. Amen. That mockery is there. And that's where God said, we live by faith and not by sight. We live by belief and not by the Greek system. That in no way I'm trying to say Greek system is wrong. God is not even trying to say that. God doesn't say that. God never says right or wrong, but he only says, hey, he, he still... He made you walk on the water. He made Peter walk on the water. Nevertheless, he still walked. <laughs> okay. Yes. He didn't make him fly on the water. He walked on the water. Are you with me? So he doesn't denounce the Greek system. Rather, he enhances the Greek system. There is more to it than what they see. There is more to it than what they feel and experience. Mm -hmm. There is more to it than the pill that we take. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is more to it than the dollar that you have. Imagine that. That's why God is asking us to give tithe. I'm like, okay, what, 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 what's the big deal? About it. So when we bring that, that exchange of it, when it is happening, he is expanding it. Mm -hmm. He's expanding that Greek system and taking it into his system, Theos. The God system. The kingdom of God system and making it work according to the God standard. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Did you get something from this? Amen. Amen. We will learn more about how to challenge the Greek system in us. Amen? Amen. There's a lot to it uh, that we can uh, look at and figure out and study more. And I pray, I encourage you to study. I'm not asking you to become philosophers or anything. At least get a gist of what those, philo those philosophies stand for. Mm -hmm. So we can understand ourselves. It's not about blaming others as, as well as learning where, where they are coming from mm -hmm. and how can they be persuaded. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now before we end, any comments, questions, concerns, ratings? It's interesting, <laughs> like ratings? Yeah. Like, read read yeah. the message. If, if you like it, if it is excellent, put, give five stars. If it, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It's interesting like how you were saying um, there's nothing new under the sun. Three times in the that whole chapter, verse 5, 8, and 13, when they didn't like what was going on coming from God, they stirred up the crowds. Yes. It's nothing new under the sun. That's what we're still seeing today. Uh, uh, yeah. Amen. That, that, that's the biggest problem. If you don't like it, you don't like it by yourself. You want a crowd to go with you. Yeah. Whatever you don't like it, you go talk to other people. Yeah. They want, you want them by your side. Recruit. You want them to hate the same person you are hating. Yeah. You know, whenever the, the husband and wife gets into a fight, he, they look for somebody who can agree with them. Yeah. I want that person to be by my side. Yeah. We tell the stories to them, and as I'm, <laughs> it's so crazy. We try to give the facts that would rile up the other person and come on our side, so they can agree with us. You know, it's a funny thing of our life. 
Yeah. It's always there. It's always been there. And the same thing goes on right now. Yes, ma'am. Which were the two philosophies you said that we should study? Epicurean, is it? Yeah. And Epicurean and Stoic. And Stoic. S T O I C. Can you spell that? <laughs> Those are a prominent influencers at that time. The Greek society has been influenced so much by them. Even the Platoism or uh, Aristotleism or whatever it is, it has all the links from these two systems. It has connections to these two systems. And even till now, you have the same thing, those systems still, those philosophies. All right. Yeah, we are so blessed and uh, happy to have Miss Joyce here. A yeah. couple of weeks ago, we've been praying for you. And now here we are sitting with you. Yeah, we are good. blessed. Amen. We are blessed to have. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we are thankful that God is doing good things in our lives. Yes. Right? Amen. Anything else we have? I know we already prayed in the beginning, so we probably will do the benediction and move on. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Father, bless us as we go home and do, uh, do your will uh, in, our, in our lives, Lord. And that we may walk continually in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. Excellent. Continually be embracing the grace of your Son and walking in the mercy of our Father. Amen. We thank you so we may call you Abba, Father. Amen. Even in any of our times. We bless you. We love you. You have your way in and through us. In the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful evening. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you soon. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> we are kind of lazy when it comes to offerings on Wednesdays, I guess. <laughs> We're out time. Look at that. We're still going live.